Lord, everybody. God bless you, each and every one of you. And I thank God for this opportunity again to uh, come to you. Thank God for this opportunity to share the good news of the gospel uh, this Wednesday and to all of you that have uh, desire and want to be a part of this Bible study tonight, you are welcome. We are just, again, going to give people a minute or so to come on. It's only 6.59 and praise God, got everything working good tonight and we give God praise for that. It's been a battle some weeks just to get the computer to work. And then you heard what I said, the computer, not me, huh? Amen. And so we thank God. Uh, tonight we're going to continue in our study about Jesus' prayers and how he prayed and the way that he prayed and to follow him uh, when he's praying uh, in the sense of what was accomplished uh, in prayer. God bless you, Sister Chantel, and praise God, Sister Bonnie, and God bless you, Sister Arlene Turner. Amen. We are just, again, thanking God. We are, I got something to say because I'm really not just teaching Bible study just to fill in an hour, but I really want to encourage every one of you to be committed to your prayer life. I don't see anything else that Jesus was engaged in more than prayer, and it was because of his prayers his prayer commitment is how he got results. Some of you might recall last week when we were talking about prayer and how uh, Jesus prayed before the battles. Jesus prayed before the tests. Amen. So I know a lot of times we are, uh, uh, you know, our tradition is we go to church and, and, and there's prayer requests and we begin to pray about whatever the prayer request may be. Then we also have, uh, in a lot of our churches, it was what's called a prayer line. Amen. And uh, God bless you, uh, Sister Deborah. Uh, God bless everybody listening. All right. And so listen. Uh, so in our churches, we'll have prayer lines, and then we'll begin to pray for the people to be healed, uh, for their children, their family members to be saved, uh, whatever's going on, somebody need a financial breakthrough. We, we, we will begin to pray about it. And I don't want us to be discouraged. I just want us to be more uh, 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 aligned with the order of Jesus and how Jesus was praying before the prayer meeting. Somebody get that. The prayer must proceed the prayer meeting. Huh? Come on. Okay, let's look, look at it this way. When we go to church and we have prayer meetings, the prayer meeting is prior to the meeting. Y'all, somebody catch this. You are not going to pray about the issue when the issue presents itself, but you have already... Uh, declare, and you've already, uh, uh, you know, positioned yourself in prayer for whatever the prayer request may be. So when you and I and all of us uh, Christians begin to pray, we should have already prayed before the test. And that was how our uh, master teacher, our, our leader, Jesus, prayed. Amen. He was always found praying. And so I like St. Luke. I want to just, you know, you ain't got to turn there, but Luke 1, and 18, I'm sorry, and 1. Luke 18 and 1, and we're going to read from our lesson plan tonight, and we're going to uh, hopefully finish this particular 10th chapter and move on uh, to the next chapter. But right here in 18 and 1, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end. This is Jesus now that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Huh? Men should always pray 
and not faint. It is always in order to pray. And what are we doing? Let's, let's just be real clear here tonight that our prayer life should be preparing us for life. Woo! Our prayer life should be preparing us for the trial, for the test, for the tribulation. See, I should, you should uh, get into prayer and, and, and get ourselves uh, focused on the fact that we are going to lead the prayer as conquerors. Hallelujah. We're going to leave the prayer as those that are going to subdue. Uh-huh. We're going to master. Amen. We're going to dominate. Amen. So when we get to the prayer meeting or when they have a prayer line or there's a prayer request, that's not when we start praying uh, is to say, Lord, do this and Lord, do that. But we're coming to that moment already prepared to defeat the thing that needs to be defeated. Amen. And so it's clear Jesus said men should always pray. And there's so much in just that little statement that, that it ought not be a, 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 a you know, a cavalier, a occasional, a when it's, you know, convenient, but it should be a constant. Amen. And we're going to see that even as we study tonight about the prayer life of Jesus. I don't know about y'all. I really don't want just to be spinning my wheels. I don't really want to just... Uh, say I went to the prayer meeting or that I have a prayer closet or, you know, some other, uh, you know, thing to boast about in the sense that I pray. But I want to be able to have results. Uh -huh. I want to see the manifestation of my prayer life. Amen. So look at this. Uh, as we said at the start, we should always pray. Jesus has given us instructions that men ought to always pray. And if you know your Bible, in, in this chapter, it talks about, um, uh, praise God, saying there was a city, in the second verse, a judge would fear not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in the city, in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me, my adversary. Come on. And he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, uh, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, least by her continuous coming, she worry me. Huh? Come on. So what's happening here is Jesus is showing us consistency, persistence, amen, uh, that, you know, we're not taking no for an answer. I don't know who's in this lesson tonight that need to hear that. But don't let the enemy tell you, uh, Sister Bonnie, uh, anybody on this prayer uh, line tonight, anybody in this Bible study tonight, uh, persistence. Uh, it's not maybe, it's you will go. Hallelujah. You, you will leave my child. You will, uh, you know, quit uh, interfering with my marriage. You, you, you will, in the name of Jesus, uh, I have the authority. Amen. I've been, I've been ordained by heaven. Amen. I, I, I got the kingdom uh, mandate, huh? Dominion mandate. I'm in authority. So let's not allow, uh, you know, the uh, absence of the proof of our prayer make us give up on praying. That's why Jesus said men should always pray. You know, Lord, it's, it's me. It's, it's me again. And I know there's some, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's a debate. I don't know if it's, you know, what, but, you know, they, you should just pray one time. And uh, there's not, you know, uh, that's not what the Bible supports here. So don't mind get, you know, all been out of shape with your theology. You know, here Jesus said men ought to always pray. And then he went on to give a parable about this woman that was consistent and persistent in requesting something from an ungodly person. Come on. Amen. And it says uh, in the seventh verse in, in 18 of, of St. Luke, 
it says, and he shall uh, not avenge his own elect. He said, the Lord said here, what the unjust judge said, he gonna take care of it because the woman getting on his nerve. And then Jesus goes on to say, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry what? Day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Hallelujah. This is so important. What is happening, and, and I believe this is from the Holy Spirit, that many of us have given up too soon. We, 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 we are not persistent in consistency in our prayer lives. We pray and then we just forget about it in the sense that, well, I didn't get it, so it must not have been the Lord's will. I want to help tonight, if I can, that some things you don't even have to have a debate about. Is it God's will to heal? Yes. Is it God's will for you to prosper? Yes. Is it God's will for him to, you know, supply what you need? He, he left all of this in the Bible. He left all of this on record so that you don't have to have a discussion or debate and, and a, a second guess. God wants you healed. And so you go back again and you say, Lord, I'm, I, I'm still, uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, waiting on my healing. Lord, you promised me. Lord, you, you said you could not lie. Uh, Lord, you said it was impossible. Uh, for you to lie. You said, Lord, there's nothing impossible with him that believes. So here I am again, Lord. I still got this pain, Lord. Uh, I, I, I still, uh, Father, uh, got this financial burden. I, I, I still have a child that, Lord, hasn't come to you. And you told me, Lord, uh, uh, you said, that if I get saved, you'll save my whole household. And Lord, you said, whatever I buy is bound. Come on here. Amen. Every one of us uh, need to understand this. Uh, Sister uh, Ali Bumi, uh, come on here. Uh, Sister Linda Lucas, come on here, First Lady Beverly. Come on here, uh, all of y'all. Uh, don't, don't, don't stop. See, the Lord led me to 18 and 1. The Spirit did. In, in, in Luke, so there can be uh, understanding about persistence in prayer. You be your own judge. Don't let me judge you. You judge yourself. How persistent have you been in obtaining the answers to your prayers from the place where you don't have to have a discussion or debate if it's God's will? He already told you what his will is. His will is his word. And his word said his wish above all things is that you prosper and that you be in good health even as your soul prosper. Come on here, Elder Odoms and, and, and Sister Kelly, little praise. Come on here, Dora. Amen. Read. Uh, read. Come on here. Brother George Jimson. Amen. Come on here, Sister Christy. The, how consistent are you? I'm going to help somebody. I don't want to discourage. I, I don't want you to feel that I'm judging you or, or putting you down. Uh, I don't want to offend you. I'm just saying consistency is what Jesus gave instructions here in the 18th chapter of St. Luke. He said, if you and I, God's elect, would cry unto him day and night, oh my God, that means what? Oh, I'm not letting go. Come on, come on. Is there some Jacobs out there? He wrestled with the angel all night. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Amen. Now I want to look into our, our lesson so we can try to get through it tonight. At the bottom of 156, if you got the 10th chapter of our lesson, and, and we're studying about the, you know, the life of Jesus and his prayer life. And it says, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan and was uh, with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. Uh-huh. And it says, uh, it was the lifestyle of Christ to withdraw himself to pray. He often went into the wilderness and spent time with the Father before he came out to minister to the people. 
I need y'all to hear this. Jesus didn't look for nobody to pray with him. Get this. Jesus would go and pray by himself. Some of us are very offended and, and we are hurt because we can't get people to pray with us. Jesus couldn't get nobody to pray with him when he got ready to be crucified. When he, he needed them to pray with him, they wouldn't pray with him. Come on, y'all. Let's not get our feelings hurt, but let's follow the pattern of Jesus. And then Jesus withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law setting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. My, 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 my. Come on, let's get it. Let's, get, let's grab a hold of the need to be committed to prayer and not wait on an audience. There's a lot of church prayer, but it ain't really to God, it's to the audience. Y'all know some of y'all been in church so long that you know when certain people get up to pray, you know what they gonna pray. Lord, I come to you as humble as I know how. Lord, uh, here I am uh, standing again uh, in the need of prayer. Lord, it's not my mama. It's not you know they they got a ritual. They they got a you know a, a, a flow. But but you know God is not looking for sto uh, showing and and, and showboating and styling and profiling. Uh -uh, but He wants you to go into the closet. Amen. He wants you to go into a, a wilderness place. Hey, he wants you to go to a place where it's just you and him. Uh-huh. But I like this, y'all, because when he came down, glory to God, uh, the Bible said uh, the Lord was present to heal them. He came to the religious people. He came to those that were religious when he came down from the mountain, from the place that he withdrew, wherever that was, he was by himself. And when he came, he was ready to heal. Y'all quit getting in the midst of situations and then you want to pray. It's too late. It's too late. You're not going to be effective because you have to have already consecrated yourself. And that's why there's a lot of folks that are not really committed to ministry because they're always looking for an audience. And so God, if he didn't do anything else, he took the audience away from the preachers, uh, from the prayer warriors, uh, from those that like use, uh, you know, large uh, uh, vocabulary of words as they do their, you know, prayer to, to tickle people's ears. They, they, well, and you know, uh, they got all that going, but it ain't really the God. It is to try to make somebody, amen, be impressed with them. But I'll tell y'all what, I don't need people to impress me with words. I need them to impress me with power and demonstration. Uh -huh. My late father-in-law, Reverend Tommy Wade, uh, we young preachers would be preaching so hard. And he, he would just blow your little bubble. He just, he just, you know, shut you down when you got done. Because he says, now time to demonstrate. And that's when we start shaking, like, wait a minute, you really want me to heal somebody? You really want me to prophesy? Because most of it was just theatrics. You need that kind of prayer life that'll run a demon out of your house. You need that kind of prayer life that'll run a demon off your job. You need that kind of prayer life to make the devil let your money go. Come on. It's my money, and I want it right now. I want that kind of a uh, of, of relationship with God in prayer that he'll, uh, you know, hear when he hear me. He said, I got to let it go. Amen. He, he said, because of the level of commitment that the person had where? By himself. And just, just God and you. Amen. Just you, Minister Sherry. It's just you. Amen. Uh, uh, Sister uh, Eleanor Jones, it's just you and the Lord. Amen. And so Jesus, he was ready. He had been in the place of prayer. And it, it goes on to say in our lesson, the times of prayer cause him to be endured with supernatural power to preach and to teach and minister healing and deliverance. 
the scripture declares that he was teaching um, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. The times of prayer empowered our Lord Jesus Christ to walk and operate in the supernatural. How did Jesus operate in the supernatural? I'm glad you asked the question. He operated in the supernatural because of his prayer life. Hello? It was because the way Jesus stole away by himself. Now, y'all Bible scholars, come on and, and help me because I haven't found, and I could have missed it, I didn't see any place where Jesus prayed with anybody. Marinate. I didn't see any place that Jesus called a prayer meeting with other human beings. When he was near crucif the day, the night before crucifixion, he told them to pray and he went over by himself, a stone, uh, you know, uh, away from them and prayed. I believe we're missing it in the church because too much is, is tradition and, and too much is styling and profiling and, and a lot of he and a hauling and, and, you know, grabbing the ear. And, uh, but what moves demons is somebody that have consecrated themselves with prayer and fasting. Amen. It, it's warfare. It's serious business. And I don't know, some of y'all may be getting tired of us talking about prayer. You know, some some of you just may just be like, you know what, uh, I, I really want to talk about something else. There, there ain't nothing uh, greater than prayer. Come on here. I, I've seen no greater results than what people got from praying. Amen. We, we're having too much just formalities. Uh-huh, too, too much just, you know, going through the motions. Amen. Uh, Teacher Lucas, come on. And, and so Jesus, he was ready. And the Bible says on one occasion, he spent long periods of time praying. Then he walked on the sea. Y'all see the pattern? You pray first and then you demonstrate. You pray first, then you get the power. You pray first, then you heal the sick. You pray first and then you win souls to Christ. You pray first and then you prophesy. Amen. The supernatural does not come on you when you are being tested. It comes on you after you have prayed. You are going to be tested. So that's why you and I should have a, a high level of consecration. There shouldn't be anybody slacking doing this quarantine. If anybody uh, got any really good sense, this is a, this is a, this is a real battle. We, we fighting a, a, a virus you can't see, you can't smell, you can't touch, you can't hear, you can't taste it. It's invisible. It's, it's, it's physically undetectable. But how many know, hey, 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 there ain't nothing here from the Holy Ghost. Come on, y'all. If you get in your prayer room, God will reveal to you just where your, your enemy's at. Those smiling and grinning in your face, folks, he'll show them to you. Amen. He'll, he'll show you where to go and where not to go and who to be involved with and who not to be involved with. Amen. Y'all, come on, let's repent again. Father, forgive us for a, 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 a not a, a strong enough prayer life. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings because I know people say, I pray. Well, let's, can, can we agree that we can even have a greater uh, prayer life than what we presently have? How much of our time was just in worry? How many of us are just, you know, experiencing anxiety and fear? Where does that come from? It don't come from the Lord. That comes from you doubting your God. Don't get mad. It comes from you wondering about the devil and what he's up to. Instead of you saying, I know he got nothing today because I bound him this morning. Amen. I, I know this thing is coming out because I already was endured, hey, with power. I, I, as the old folks say, I felt my help. Where at? In the prayer chamber. Amen. I was in the prayer room. I was, I was in the presence of God when the glory, hey, God, have mercy. J Moses came down and the glory was all on him that he had to have a veil on his face. Moses wasn't up in the, the mountain eating chicken. Come on, y'all. He, he was fasting when he came down. When Jesus came down, 
That's when he walked on the water. He got supernatural power that was given to him because of his consecration and his, his, his diligence, his dedication, his, his, his commitment, amen, to saying, Lord, come on. Lord, I need you tonight. Hey, God, I need you this morning, huh? Lord, uh, send your glory. Hey, hallelujah. Send your glory. Hallelujah. Let your glory. Hallelujah. This is how you pray. Let your glory fill this house. Let your glory fill my body. Uh, Lord, order my steps today. Come on, Lord. Take me by the hand and lead me on. Lord, I'm coming to you, Lord. Lord, I, I want to do great things for you today. Lord, give me power that I can uh, tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Let me, God, encounter, hallelujah, a, a, a presence that they can't deny. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost, uh, Sister Odette, hallelujah. It, it's, it's the Lord that we need to come on the scene. You know, we need to get behind God. We need to be hid in God. And the only way you can be hid in God, you got to go to a place where you recognize that it's never you anyway. It's not you. It's not me. It's the Lord. Don't lie. Tell people it's the Lord. If anybody get healed, it's the Lord. Uh, this car, this house, I got the Lord provided it. Amen. I'm, I'm walking in victory because the Lord has given me the victory. Amen. Uh, don't be a, don't be bashful. Don't be proud uh, in this sense that you think, you know, that somehow people need to shake your hand and kiss your ring and all that other foolishness. No. You need to be where God can do for you what nobody else can do for you. And the pattern and the example that we're preaching and teaching about tonight is following Jesus. How many of you say Jesus is your savior and Jesus is your master? If you got to uh, put that word master in any place uh, to be the servants of the Lord, huh? Amen. I work for Jesus. How can I work for him and I don't take instructions from him? Huh? I, I tell him what I want him to do and yet am I not submitted to him? Come on, he say, if you don't keep my commandments, you don't love me. Quit trying to, you know, say, God, I know you know my heart. No, God's looking for some folks that will sell all the way out. We're in a critical hour. Come on, y'all. How many know we need to stay in our prayer? We need to stay in our prayer in our prayer closets until we bind police brutality. Hello? Come on. The Bible said whatever we buy is bound. And whatever we loose is loose. Come on, Holy Ghost. And there's no doubt we don't want to never see another uh, uh, a video of a man uh, uh, life just removed before our eyes because of a, uh, a, a vicious and, and merciless uh, police. And we know it was Satan that was using the police. And we want to bind him and what we want to do is bind him in prayer. Amen. That when we come out, amen, he want to do something, but he's, he's bound. He's not free. He don't have liberty. How many know we want to bind crooked uh, politicians and we want to get rid of racism. That's a spirit. Amen. That makes somebody believe they're superior. It's a lie. You know, there's nobody uh, a superior. God already left it on record. He said all flesh of the same flesh. And that God is no respect of person. So we see all the exploits of Satan. We see the demonic uh, powers, uh, all of this loose living. Come on. We, we, we see a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction. And how is it so that this is happening all around us? Don't be afraid and, and don't be intimidated. Uh, but be like that woman. Say, oh, Lord. Where are you doing this at? Not entertaining Pastor Miller and the mother church folks, but in your prayer room. Oh, Lord, I'm crying out today that, Lord, you, God, would empower me that I would have the uh, ordination and the authority to bind uh, police brutality, that no police 
in my city. Come on, y'all. No sheriff in my county. Come on, somebody. No wicked judges uh, that will grant a, 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 a pardon, so to speak, a, a, an acquittal, a no jury will be able to allow. That's what we need to start praying. I hear the Holy Ghost right now. We need to begin to pray that they won't be able to allow these police to go free. Come on. We, we need to take that authority that they will not uh, be able to deny justice this time, that uh, George Floyd's uh, death won't be in vain. Amen. We can assure that through uh, 16th chapter of Matthews and the 19th verse around there. He said, whatever we bind, glory to God. It's bound. Amen. Let's bind corruption. The Bible said wickedness in high places. Come on, the Bible said, but Jesus' name, you read that Ephesians, that first chapter, his name is far, far above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Come on, in our prayer chambers, let's bind the spirit of witchcraft. Let's bind the spirit of, of deceitfulness, uh, the spirit of manipulation, the spirit of this honesty. Come on here. Let's bind corruption. Is there anybody listening that is against us praying against corruption in the police department and protect all the good police, protect every righteous man and woman that works in the police department that's not taking money from the drug dealers. Come on here. Uh, that are not uh, putting down a gun at the crime scene and say it was the person that they shot. Come on here. Let's, let's do more than these cameras, but let's, let's shut the enemy's plans down that nobody has to die, that nobody has to lose their life, that nobody has to, you know, look into a golden casket. I don't care how pretty George Floyd's casket was, I wouldn't want to be in it. I don't care if you made it out of pure gold. I don't want to be prematurely dead because what? I want to live as long as God would give me life and breath, huh? Amen. I don't want to just be out here chanting, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and use all of this as a movement. But what moves the devil is prayer. Come on, I need somebody that can dispute this to, to call me, 217-4468-214, uh, and, and say, no, uh, this is better than prayer. You got something better than prayer. I need you to tell me about it because that's all Jesus used. Come on here, uh, Sister Shaw. Come on here, uh, all of you on the line tonight. Amen. It's praying time before we go to the prayer meeting. It's praying time before we go out of our houses. We don't want to run around African-Americans and be paranoid looking over our shoulder because we're scared of the police. No, the police need to be scared of us if we're walking in dominion mandate authority. How do you do that? You go into your prayer room and you begin to have a relationship with God, that God is moving, amen, because of your prayer life. There's a scripture that says you have not because you pray not. That's it. I don't want nobody to be offended. But I'm saying, come on, let's pray, Lord, forgive us for not having the kind of prayer life that you require of us. Help us not to give in to tiredness, being irritable. Let us not allow little spits and spats in our marriages and little conflicts uh, with our children and, and our funny money. No, no, let's not. Or get caught up in uh, the young and the restless and, and gone with the wind and whatever you else might want to watch. You ain't got no sports right now and, and a lot of stuff is just reruns and you watching it over. It's already dead and you watching dead stuff. Amen. Come on here. Yes, it's labor. Any women on this line, anybody uh, streaming tonight can tell you when it's time to bring forth new life, it takes work. You ain't in no delivery room trying to be cute. You ain't got nobody in there doing your fingernails and, and, and letting you, you know, pick out another weave. You, you're not in there uh, getting your makeup done. You, 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 you down, you, you, you in there for business, huh? Amen. And everybody better get out of your way because you're getting ready to bring forth new life. Amen. Come on, y'all. We got to get ourselves in a place 
where we are not running scared, but the devil is running scared of us. There's a scripture that talks about the dread of him. Glory God. The dread, the, the, the fear of God ought to rest upon you when you step out of your house. Amen. Your children ought to have a reverence for you because they said, uh oh, mama, been in the prayer room. Daddy, been in the prayer room, but not mess with them. The, the, the power of God is all over. For you know it, you'll be speaking in tongues. <laughs> Glory to God. For you know it. You'll be there on the front row talking about, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. Huh? Amen. We, we ought to have that kind of presence that when you come on the scene, people begin to confess their sins. You didn't ask to, to know all their business, but they were just, they just prompt by the Holy Ghost. They begin to say, I've been doing this and I need prayer and I've been doing that. And some of you have been caught off guard because you didn't realize it was the presence of God on you making the devil coughing up. Amen. They had to confess it. They went in the confessing booth. They didn't have to go to the, uh, the Catholic church and get in the booth, but they just right there at County Market and Walmart and, and wherever you were at. At the gas station, they just come up to you and say, I got to tell you, uh, you know, I need prayer. Come on. Amen. It's your prayer life. It's my prayer life that will get us whatever we're in pursuit of. Amen. Whatever we need God to do. I'm going to keep taking this back. I'm going to keep taking this back. 18 of St. Luke and 1. To me, it should always pray. Hallelujah. That, that woman kept praying. And I mean, she kept pursuing the old unjust judge till he gave it up. And God is saying, come on. Come on, be consistent. Come on, be persistent. No, quit crying. Quit all of that emotional fits. That ain't going to get the devil out of your house, out of your child. But you saying, Lord, I'm, it's me again. And Lord, I'm expecting a move of God today. Yes, Lord, uh, I'm expecting, Lord, that thing to break today. God, I'm expecting this pain to leave my body today. Amen. And you say, well, the day is over and there's a new morning coming. And you wake up, you say, well, Lord, it's me again. I ain't forgot about what I already said I need you to do. And Lord, I'm waiting on that manifestation. And God, it's, 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 a, a, it's a promise that you said. You can't lie. Lord, you say your word never goes out void. Come on. Amen. And, and let's, let's go on a little further. And it says, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him into the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up unto the mountain apart to pray. He told him, y'all get out on the water, get in the boat. I'm going to go pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Did y'all catch it? Quit waiting for some other folks, uh, Minister Dion. Quit waiting for other people to get consecrated. Quit waiting, uh, uh, all of us, Sister Dana Davis, let's quit waiting on the preacher. Uh, the preacher didn't call and pray with me. Uh, my prayer partner, didn't. they, 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 they see I text them and I said, uh, SOS, SOS, you know, no, no. You got to be a person that is not dependent on nobody but you and God. Amen. Can you get a prayer through that shut the devil down in your house, in your family, on your job, in your city? We've been saying it for about 15, 20 years Danville, Illinois is the city of God. And we've been battling and the enemy has been trying to say, no, it ain't. And we got to talk back to that devil and say, yes, it is. Danville is the city of God. Come on, Urbana. Urbana is the city of God. Come on, Champaign. A uh, Champaign is the city of God. Come on, Rantoul. A uh, Rantoul is the city of God. Where you at on this uh, 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 streaming tonight? Call your city out. Amen. Begin to say it. Amen. And say, I'm going to be persistent. I'm going to keep on decreeing and declaring. 1821 of Proverbs said, death in life is in the power of the tongue. Amen. Your words are seeds. Come on here. Somebody say, everybody in the name of Jesus is saved in my house. Come on, Dr. Borns. Everyone, amen, is saved. Everyone is healed. Uh, your wife, uh, uh, Dr. Borns, is healed. Don't ever take it back. Her back is healed. And God did creative 
miracles if it's necessary, that he can build his own disc. He can build his own spine. He made the first one. Come on here, uh, Sister Folson. You're healed. Uh, a complete recovery from your back surgery. Come on, somebody. Amen. It is not a maybe. It's not a well. It's an absolute yes. Amen. And then if you say, I don't see it, then that means what? Go back in the chamber. I said, Lord, it's me again. Uh-huh. And Lord, I know you can do it. See, the devil is so slick, you're too smart. Uh, you, you keep saying, well, evidently, no, no, evidently nothing. The devil knows you are quick if you don't get answers in a day or two. And then some of you won't even pray the same uh, consistency for even a day or two, much less, much less a week or a month or a year, the same prayer. Lord, I'm expecting healing. Lord, I'm, a, I'm expecting my child to come in and say, what must I do to be saved? Because you said, Lord, you the one that said it, Lord. You said, remind you of your word. I'm here again to remind you a prophet Everett. You got it. You got whatever you've been praying about. It's yours. Every one of us, <laughs> excuse me, we got it. It don't matter how long it's been. Can you check the record and see how persistent you have been? Amen. How persistent. Amen. I say it all the time. I don't change my position. I'm financially independent. I owe no man. I'm consistent saying it. I'm just saying y'all so y'all can hear me. But I'm healed. Amen. I I'm decreeing, declaring that everybody in my house is saved. And some of them yet have not uh, confessed. But I don't change it. I keep on saying, Lord, because you said it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Got pain rocking my body. And, and I still say, Lord, you said I'm healed. I'm expecting this pain to leave. I don't want to be dependent on medicine. Thank God for medicine. But a higher level of medicine is I don't have no pain. Pain is a camouflage of the pain. The medicine, I mean, is a camouflage. The, the sickness is still there, and it just takes it away uh, from you being able to feel it. But it's still there. Amen. I want to live pain-free. Amen. I want to live medicine-free. Amen. Doctor-free. Thank God for doctors and nurses. Don't none of y'all on this line get offended. You're going to still have plenty of folks who will be coming to your office, amen, and looking for you to help them. But there's some of us that want to live at a higher level. Amen. Glory to God. All right, come on. We got to finish this tonight. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I be not afraid. Matthew 14, 22 and 27. How many of y'all are going to be uh, close enough to God that when he do something extraordinary, you won't be tripping. You won't be afraid. You can say, I know that's the Lord right there. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't need nobody to tell me about him. I know too much about him for myself. Amen. Come on here. Uh, uh, Sister Renee, come on here. Glory to God. All of you on the line tonight. Amen. It's, 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 it's clear. Jesus was given to prayer. He wasn't given to a talk. The Bible says in Proverbs, a talk is like pennies. It's cheap. Come on now. My, my father was uh, limited in his education, but he said, oh, uh, uh, ain't, uh, ain't ain't never done nothing. It's a, he said, it's old dude. <laughs> Come on here, uh, William Miller. Amen. He said, I don't want to hear nothing about y'all can't. He said, I'm looking for some folks to say I'll do it. Amen. And God looking for some folks in prayer that say, Lord, I know you as my savior. I know you as my healer. And I know you as my redeemer. And then the day go by and you don't get any results. Then you write back again the next day saying, Lord, because you said it. Huh? Lord, you said you would, you would revenge me speedily. Lord, I'm looking for a quick turnaround. Huh? Amen. Just like this sickness showed up. I'm expecting it to go. Just like uh, my job let me go, I'm expecting a better job. Come on here. I'm not around here begging. The Bible says you never see the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Come on here, Sister Pamela Grant. Amen. God is on the side of those that have faith in him. 
How do you build your faith? Prayer and fasting. I'm going to keep telling you, you, if you don't have a fast life and you don't have a prayer life, then you can forget it. Don't get your feelings hurt. Don't be, ah, oh, the Lord don't, don't do what he's saying. The Lord don't love me. Yes, he do. He waiting on you to get in that place where you won't take no for an answer. Amen. Somebody said, not on my block, not in my neighborhood, not in my city. Amen. No sickness, no disease, not in my family. No corrupt police, corrupt politicians. Amen. I bind that spirit that is the one that is behind it because he said we got no business uh, hating white folks or black folks or Hispanic folks because the war is not with flesh and blood. Oh, yeah, the enemy will speak through some flesh. Oh, yeah, he'll make some flesh say some ugly things to you and try to pull you off your square and get you to cussing and fighting and chunking rocks and all of that. No. But you ought to stay in the prayer room so when they spit on you, you don't have to spit back. Somebody better catch this. Amen. When they cuss you, you don't have to cuss them back. Come on here. I want to be at that level. How many of you want to be at that level that when the enemy come and he's coming, you want to be prayed up? You want to be consecrated. Don't be grabbing a hold of, you know, I'm hot tempered and you know, I don't take no stuff. The devil going to embarrass you and the church. You're going to make a mess of everything when you run around talking about, no, nobody get in my face and don't nobody tell me and don't nobody call me the N word. And come on, in your prayer room is where you break the hand of the enemy. In your prayer room is where you make your flesh behave. In your prayer room is how you bring your flesh. Paul said, I bring my flesh under subjection. I bring my body under subjection. Huh? Amen. You don't do that uh, full of chicken and, and Twinkies. You do that through prayer and fasting. Come on, y'all. I got just a few minutes left. We got to finish this. And, and, and Jesus' uh, uh, prayer gave Jesus unrestricted access to the realm of the supernatural. How many want unrestricted asset, uh, access? You know what I'm trying to say. How many want to be in the very presence of the supernatural? Well, then go in your closet and pray till it come. Amen. Go into your pro go into your prayer room until you be endured with some power. Amen. It's time to break the hands of the enemy. Uh-huh. It came up in my spirit today. And I was saying, yes, Lord. He said that the world is waiting on the sons of God to manifest. He said they're groaning and moaning. He said the whole world waiting on us. And we sitting around eating chicken and hamburgers and gossiping, and Facebooking, and, 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 and all the other stuff. Y'all don't like this? It's the truth. Come on here. You got to raise, come on, Elder Nelly, you got to raise your level of prayer and consecration until the glory fill the house. Hey, hey, come on. There has to be some resilience, some residual. You know what I'm trying to say. There has to be a, 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 a presence of God that goes with you. Peter was cussing Peter at one time, but he got in a place of prayer and consecration to where his shadow was anointed. People would follow him just to see if they could throw somebody down on and, and catch his shadow because it was so anointed. Peter was just a very uh, uh, a high uh, uh, emotional person, but through prayer and consecration, he said, silver and gold, hey, have I not? But that that I have in the name of Jesus, Take up your bed and walk. Come on here. I ain't just preaching to y'all. This thing cut me deep tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm saying, Lord, you you preaching. Woo, but it's so cutting. You are, you, you preaching good. But this thing is, is making me tight tonight. Oh, you know, I talk about y'all uh, and say y'all in the squirmy seat. Well, he sure got me squirming right now. Oh, I'm like, woo, come on, Holy Ghost. Hey, lighten up here. No, God calling for a higher level of prayer and fasting. Amen. You can't take nothing. Stay in your closet until you can hold your peace. Come on here. Stay. Okay, don't get mad, but stay in your closet until you can keep your drawers up. Oh, somebody know they don't want to hear that. They under quarantine. They're trying to find some comfort. No, you got to even under quarantine not be a fornicator not be an adulteress, not be a, a homosexual, a practicing homosexual. Come on here. Amen. You you can't be getting drunk 
in quarantine. Stay in your closet till you don't want liquor no more. Stay in your prayer room until you lose uh, the desire for nicotine. Come on here. Stay in the closet until you quit playing the lottery. You out there with your mask on, you think you hid and you all in the lottery line. Come on here. <laughs> Y'all don't wanna hear this? I'm telling you, he coming for me, he coming for you. What is the lesson? Persistence, consistency is how Jesus was able to deliver the children of Israel. That's how Moses was able to deliver the children of Israel. He was on the backside of the mountain by himself for 40 years. Y'all, we're missing it. We, we really want to come together and have other folks to pray us through. That's why nothing's happening. You not praying and they not praying. And then everybody coming in the building, looking around like, who going to do it? Oh, I'm saying, come on, y'all. Let's not go back when the quarantine is lifted and our church is not anointed. Come on, all of us ought to be walking in power when we come out of this quarantine. We ought to be walking in demonstration. Amen. We ought to be, you know, so that the enemy is horrified. He might have found he don't want the quarantine to get lifted. If we come out of the quarantine and destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Look at this. It says, uh, transfiguration of Christ reveals spiritual truth about the power of prayer. And it came to pass about the eighth day after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glittering. Now I said earlier that I don't have no place where Jesus prayed with anybody, but here it says he took Peter and them to go and pray. But it didn't say they were in the same spot praying. He just said he was going up there to pray. And by the fact, you go on in there and read how it was that the glory only came on Jesus and they were just there to observe it. They got to see, whoa, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden they want to say, well, let us have the same kind of ministry that you have. And matter of fact, Jesus, let's build three tabernacles, one for you and one for uh, Elijah and, and one for Moses. And God, uh, I believe, got a little hot because the Bible said he came in the cloud and he spoke out of the cloud and he said, here is my beloved son, hear ye him. Woo! When we get all of us fleshly preachers out of the way and we'll say, hear the Lord Jesus, hear ye him. He's your savior. He's your deliverer. He's the one that went to the cross for you. Don't you even think for one second that I am any place near Jesus. I'm only his servant, but he is your savior. Come on, let's pray to where we don't need to have any accolades laid on us. We don't need any uh, uh, anniversaries. We don't need any appreciations. Come on here. Amen. It's time to go to the next level. How do we go? Persistency in prayer. Come on, y'all. I want to see that. I want to see myself. Some more people I love saved. I want to see some more people I love healed. We've had some losses and, and it's hurt deeply. And I'm just saying, Lord, I want to pray that, Lord, my life is in a greater place. That, Lord, if I can block death, I want to be able to block death. I want to block cancer and any other disease. Amen. And so I do pray and I do fast, but I'm never at a place where I think I've done enough. I need more consecration, more time in prayer and in fasting because I want to see more people healed. What about you? I want to see more people set free. And it says, you will realize the transfiguration took place as he prayed. He was in the midst of prayer that the fashion of his continence was altered. This was a divine um, you know, I can't say the word uh, ma metamorphosis. Oh, yeah, metamorphosis. Thank you, Holy Ghost, or a supernatural change. When this occurred, Jesus and the disciples with him began to enjoy a supernatural manifestation. Elijah and Moses appeared unto them. They showed up. Isn't that man? I want to see some of the glory. Huh? Amen. I want the Lord to let some of the glory show up where well, I can say, my, look at that. Amen. 
And so uh, they entered a cloud. They heard the voice of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We got about six minutes, uh, saints. Uh, he said, when you take time to climb the mountains of spiritual uh, 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 as scenery, well, uh, 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 through fasting and prayer, I probably didn't get that word right, you will experience supernatural change, uh, a different dimension of your life. Uh, the things that seem impossible will suddenly become possible. I'm telling you, people say you're crazy when you spend time with God because you believe in for stuff they say ain't no way. But when you spend time in prayer and fasting, then you can say, I believe God going to give me this. And I believe God say, I can have that. And I believe God going to do this. And they're looking at you because they haven't been in prayer. They've just been around eating chicken. They've just been running around la de da and, and you've been with God and God then showed you what he going to do. And when you tell other folks, they laugh at you. And they're like, uh-huh, yeah, right. Amen. I want to live that kind of life where the Lord, hey, will minister to me in such a way that it might seem like I'm a crazy man until the glory show up, until the healings manifest, amen, until the doors open, amen. Glory to God. He said uh, throughout his ministry, Jesus Christ had a lot of opposition from the, from the scribes and the Pharisees. These were the, the bishops and the apostles and the elders and the prophets and the teachers and the pastors, all these folks, the deacons, all the trustees, the stewards. He had a lot of problem with them folks. And he said, they always oppose him with what the law and the prophets said. Uh, the main pillars behind the law and the prophets were Moses and Elijah. And they were the ones that manifested themselves to Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. During times of intensive prayer, the main powers operating behind the scenes of any situation or opposition you are dealing with will manifest themselves, but God will give you the victory. Did y'all hear that? God's going to show you what you're up against, but then he's going to tell you, don't worry about it. I got you. Don't worry about it. Amen. And God will give you the victory. When these powers are revealed, you will begin to experience supernatural changes in different dimensions of your life, the things that seem impossible will suddenly become uh, divinely possible. Your purpose will be revealed and the promise will be fulfilled. As he prayed, they entered in the cloud. The presence of God overshadowed them. And in the midst of the presence of God, the voice of God was released uh, through his lifestyle of prayer. Jesus had demonstrated the steps that are required to enter the presence of God and what it is required to hear the voice of God. Anybody want God's presence to show up, go in your prayer chamber by yourself, not with your husband or your wife, go in there by yourself, not with your children, not with your pastor, go in there by yourself and stay there until God, uh, Minister Sherubin, Pastor Sherubin, stay right there. Hallelujah. Until the glory fills that house down there in Florida, that, that house, that, that prayer house you call your church. Amen. Let the Lord feel it because Pastor Sir Reuben been in prayer. And they're going to wonder when they walk in there, I feel something this morning. Hallelujah. Why? Because pastor, hey, 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 been in prayer. Amen. The mothers ain't been sitting around gossiping. Amen. Worrying about how big their hat is and, and who's going to be the cutest. And the deacons ain't going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, crossing their legs with their uh, thick and thin and, and they and they Stacey Adams on. And the bishop won't be walking in with a long robe on and a big old cross. Oh, uh, but the presence of God, hallelujah, will come in the room because of the prayer life. Amen. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you. Woo, we thank you tonight for prayer. We've made it because prayer. It's because of our ancestors that prayed when they were not even allowed to read or write. They prayed. They believed you, God. Is how we made it up into 2020. That's how we made it this far during this pandemic. That's how we made it through COVID-19. Lord, let there be a rededication to prayer tonight. Let us follow that our master, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, he demonstrated that he was endured with power because of his prayer life. He was able to resist 
temptation, when the devil came to try to tempt him because he had been in prayer and consecration. The Bible said that the enemy uh, couldn't do nothing. He couldn't find no gal, no lies were in Jesus' mouth. He couldn't find anything. Lord, help us tonight. Help me. Because you show preach to me tonight. Help me, Lord, that I'll be the man you called me to be in these last and evil days. Bless everybody on the line. Bless every family. Continue to just manifest healing. And Sister uh, Folson, uh, Phyllis' body, continue to just comfort all the bereaved families, the, 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 the Floyd, uh, George Floyd family, all the other local families, names I can't call right now, all of our members that recently had a loss in their family. Comfort them, Lord. Comfort tonight. America, God, we are praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless y'all tonight. And uh, we're going to be streaming uh, again Sunday at 11. But we also are going to be on the parking lot. We're going to be there again. This Sunday, we're going to have a drive up church, drive in church, drive in and a praise team and dancers. And we're going to be preaching again on the parking lot. Uh, we've already checked the weather reports and it's supposed to be a beautiful day again this Sunday. Invite people to, to the parking lot. We, we got a real big parking lot, a lot of room, and we are blessed to have a PA system that you can hear me preaching all over the parking lot. Amen. If you want to stay at home, okay. But for others that want to get out, amen, and come, come on and let's pray together. Hey, let's worship together. Amen. Whatever the Lord give me, we're going to say it. Amen. Saturday morning glory. Get up. Some of y'all been laying in the bed again. Get up and join us. Just get on New Life page and get that number. And at 7 a.m. Central Time, we're going to be praying. Hey, what did we just get through saying? Jesus won through prayer. Amen. So let's come together. I'm going to lead the prayer, but everybody will be at liberty because your, your phones will be muted. So won't nobody interrupt the other person praying because I'll be praying. But there's many things that you can pray about. And we're joining our faith together. It's already 801. And God bless y'all all. all. And I uh, pray the Lord protect you, watch over you, and keep you. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.